What's up guys, Times here with another video. Today I'm doing an Elver Quest Guide to help out everyone who's stuck on those Elver Quests and to show the most efficient way to do them. I hope everyone enjoys and please don't forget to like and subscribe, it really helps me grow my channel. What you're gonna need is one graphics card, one component, three rubber, two chemicals, five rope, four metal sheets, one military rope, one blowtorch, and, and that'll make you one horde beacon. What you're going to do now is go up to the floating house following this parkour path and sacrifice it in the altar. After that, the teleporter will activate and you can be teleported to the island. You'll be teleported into a white room, take the balloon floating in the middle of the room, and it will reveal a white door. Through this door will be the island with all the NPCs. All of your quests will be given by Rainwright. You will have three quest options, Huntsman, Sorcerer, and Collector. Accept all of these quests. The first Huntsman quest I was able to do by going to the mall, shooting all the zombies, and logging out and logging back in to respawn the mall. Preferably use a loud weapon to draw all the zombies in the area. Go back to Rainwright. He says, good job, and then tells you to go kill 300 more zombies. He will then tell you you have to kill 500 zombies. Go do that. Once you're finished, come back to Rainwright and turn in the third quest. Now you're finished with all the Huntsman quests. Next quest you're going to do is the Collector quest. You're going to go find six keycards throughout the map. I will show you each location. The green keycard can be found in four locations, but by far the easiest is Junction 67 on the table outside the entrance. This allows access to all the dead zone areas. The blue keycard can be found in between two benches and a trash can underneath some rubbish at Fisherman's Grove. This keycard allows access to the firing range so you can more easily get some weapons. The red keycard can be found in two locations in the dorms. The easiest is the third room on the left on the dorms. Jump onto the balcony and go into the room beside it which is blocked off. It's sitting there on the shelf. The red keycard unlocks the locker room. You can find more thick military clothing inside that room. The white key card can be found at the northern tunnel. Go to the far right blockade and jump and you'll be able to see it behind the roadblock. The white key card unlocks another mining area. The black key card is west of the northern tunnel inside a crashed helicopter. Go prone and you'll be able to see it inside the cockpit. The black key card unlocks a storeroom with attachments and guns. The purple key card can be found at the southern tunnel, inside the left tunnel, in a violin case. The purple key card unlocks the main mining area for scrap metal and other resources. After getting all the cards, go back to Rainwright on the floating island and turn in the quest. The next quest he'll give you is the servant quest. Pick up the badge in town, visit the floating house, dispose of the floating poster, then destroy all four wanted posters. After going back to the floating house, you'll see the floating poster. Press F to destroy it. Then, green text will appear on the wall saying, destroy them. Do it. The first poster location is on the entrance to the hospital, just outside. The second is on the east wall of the demolition site. Destroy it. The third is in the parking lot of the police station. Destroy it. The last one is in the park, on this booth in the middle. After destroying it, green text will appear saying, your reward is waiting. Go back to the floating island with Rainwright. After going back to Rainwright, he'll give you another quest called Worthy. This means you have to complete all the other quests. So far, I have completed all of them except for the Horde Beacons in Ghost Valley. Do a Horde Beacon in Ghost Valley, then return to Rainwright. He will tell you that you need to do two more Horde Beacons in Ghost Valley. Go back, and do two more Horde Beacons. The best way to do this, in my opinion, is just bring lots of medical supplies and ammo. Doing this melee would be almost impossible due to, the amount, due to the amount of spitters, flamers, and cloakers. If it was normal zombies, I would understand, but this is way too difficult. 
after finishing those two horde beacons, go back to Rainwright. And, you guessed it, he'll tell you to do three more horde beacons at Ghost Valley. Luckily, this is the last one. With just myself completing these horde beacons, I used around two to 300 rounds of ammo per horde beacon. With more people, it would be even more difficult. After completing the last three horde beacons, head back to Rainwright. Completing this quest will give you the option of completing the worthy quest too. After you complete that, a ghost will appear on the right side of the island past Rainwright. The ghost will say, you've proved yourself. Are you ready to receive your reward? Are you happy? Interacting with him will convert his body to a green teleporter. Go through it. You will be transported into a kind of maze with a very blocky texture. Follow the path straight ahead and to the right. Up that stairs will be a door. It leads into a hallway, with locked doors on all sides except for the very last one. I used free cam, and I looked through all these doors and there's nothing behind it, so just go straight to the end. It will drop you into a hallway, go to the end, and complete the parkour with the ladder. I found the easiest way was to go up the ladder and jump onto the three crates, and go up one by one. At the very end of the sewer tunnel, there will be a grate and stairs. Up those stairs will be a door with a key on a step next to it. Pick up the key, and you'll be able to open the door. There are lots more keys and doors throughout this level, so pay close attention. The door leads into a building that's placed in Seattle, but by the look of it, it's incomplete. Go up all the stairs. At the top of the stairs, you'll see a locked door. The key is in the cabinet to the room to the right. Pick up that key, and you'll be able to go through the door. Go down the fire escape, and to the right, there will be another door. This one leads into the tall, brown apartment building in Seattle. The key for this door is up the military watchtower in Seattle at the top. Pick it up and you'll be able to go through the door. After going through the door to the brown apartment building, you'll see it's a parkour quest to get to the top. It's fairly simple with max skills, but it can be done with none. When you reach the top, you'll be able to see what looks like buildings floating in the sky. Now, if you haven't played and used the map editor in this game, the three arrows coming off of that building is what it looks like when you're placing something. You'll be able to see Nelson sitting at his computer, working on the map. If you interact with him, he'll say, What are you doing here? Washington's not complete yet. And then he'll be teleported back to the floating island. All you have to do is press escape while you're in this menu, and he won't teleport you back. Grab the key that's sitting next to his computer and head back down. Head outside to the shed that's sitting next to the military tent. There's a door. Open it, and you'll be able to see a man in a blindfold. It's Big J. What follows is a series of interactions in between your character and Big J. After a while, he leaves and teleports away. That's it. That's all the quests and the easter egg of the Alver map. Solved. Thank you everyone for watching, and please, please, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps me grow my channel. Thank you.